So we've covered so many different topics on the units, Pat, that we've really got one more important area of the clutch that we haven't touched on yet, and that's the throw-out bearing. So we've got a couple of units on the, on the corner of the bench there, so why don't you uh, run us through some of the differences between those units. Okay, Matt, so starting at the beginning, this is kind of our traditional throw-out bearing we have here. Uh, this is our part number 479. It's very popular to be used with the Red Hat unit. Um, we machine this collar and house and then press a, a standard type automotive release bearing onto it. Um, it works very well, although it does have some, some issues over time, the wear and things, the bearing will get a little bit loose in the collar there, but it, it does function pretty well. Um, more recently, we've designed this kind of upgraded version of the bearing where it's the same type of machine collar, but it actually comes apart. And it's got, inside of here, we've got a bearing with a tool steel face on it, and this bearing spring, sp spins very freely. Uh, when you go to push the clutch in at the finish line, the bearing's not turning, and the engine's turning eight or 9,000 RPM, maybe more. So that bearing's got to ramp up to speed. And this bearing does a very good job of that, and it's got a very good wear resistance. And then on top of it, there's no internal grease that can get slung out of that and get into the clutch assembly itself or even possibly down onto the clutch disc. So that, that's a really trick part that we're pretty happy with. Um, moving up from there, um, a lot of cars are moving to billet clutch forks that have two uh, locating pins. And this is what we call an anti-rotational collar uses the same type bearing we just looked at. It's got the tool steel bearing with the pop-on face. It spins very freely. Uh, the only difference here is this bearing stays perfectly located inside the belt housing. The, the billet fork actually has, a, instead of having a pivot ball, has a heim joint that it rotates on, so there's no moving around on the pivot ball. So the engagement and disengagement of the clutch is very positive. So, and with all these units, we're also also able to offer different uh, length collars because something that we get asked about a lot of times uh, either on email or phones is how do I really set the bearing up correctly in my bell housing in relationship to the fingers? So, um, you know, the bearing obviously operates the, the levers, um, but why don't we talk about a little bit how important it is to have the proper distance uh, and proper fork geometry to make sure we operate the clutch correctly. Yeah, so when we're setting this up initially, Matt, we're gonna wanna have about a quarter inch clearance between the face of the throttle bearing and the, and the levers themselves. And again, if you maintain that ring height, you're gonna consistently keep that clearance that you need. Uh, once you lose that clearance and the clutch starts to wear, the ring height's not maintained, you can actually get against the throttle bearing and unload the clutch prematurely. So we definitely wanna set that um, dimension correctly. The bearings, we do have them in a variety of sizes depending on what depth bell housing you have to make that fit correctly. And, and the reason why we want that uh, clearance between the face of the bearing and the fingers is because as you start adding the counterweight on any of these units, um, the levers actually start to move towards uh, the bearing and actually apply the pressuring. That's how we obviously uh, adjust the amount of force that the clutch has, correct? Right, and that, and that coupled with the clutch disc wearing so that when that clutch disc wears on a run, when that initial slip takes place, that lever is going to move back all by itself just for the wear of that run. Now again, we've got a lot of uh, you know cool pieces here. Now, when and where might you consider a dual disc uh, unit? Something, uh, something in the well, you know the same vicinity here. All these units are available in two and sometimes three disc uh, assemblies. Um, these right here, we're kind of targeting single disc systems. A lot of these fit in stock depth bell housings, maybe a Lakewood bell housing or a quick time. But if you have a deeper bell housing, uh, we certainly can build you a, a two or a three disc unit to go in there as well. Now, when to use one? Uh, when the horsepower level starts to increase and you start to go above a thousand horsepower, the dual disc unit tends to start to want to win out just because you have more surface area to spread the heat across and the engagement of the clutch can be a lot smoother with more friction. When you add more friction to the clutch system, the easier the engagement is going to be. It's kind of like adding pressure members in the low pro units. Just more surface area is just going to make the clutch a little more friendly. So, and uh, kind of like everything else we do, it's really important for us to get the proper information from the customer to really figure out which one of these might be right for their application, or again, perhaps maybe a step up to the dual disc. Exactly, and I, I think one of our philosophies here at RAM is we, much like buying shoes, we don't want to buy a clutch that's too small for what we need. We want to buy something that we have a little extra capacity built into so that we're not pushing the envelope all the time and so we can get a good service life out of it. So we've got a lot of great options here when it comes to the single disc unit. Um, it's really important for the customer. It's definitely not a one size fits all. So it's really important for the customer to get us the right information. So um, what's the best way for a customer to get started in uh, getting us that information, Pat? Matt, the best way is probably to reach out on our website on our e-tech form at ramclutches.com. Uh, you can get the vehicle specifics communicated over to us. We can take a look at it and then we can reach back out to you to kind of start the process of what clutch is gonna be best for you. 
So like Pat said, we're just an email or a phone call away. Don't ever hesitate to give us a call. We're always happy and uh, eager to help you guys.